Welcome back to my playthrough of the Scarlet Keys with Finn and Nathaniel. So let's get be let's get to, uh, let's get started. Let's go ahead and the table. Actually, just downloaded three point one, so that's I don't know what changed. Hopefully, not too much. Well, that seems like a not good, but hopefully everything still works. Interesting. We move the phase tracker. Oh, this victory is totally new to me. Anyway. It's kind of cool. All right. But what we really care about is Scarlet Keys, right? That's what we're here for. So let's get that set. Let's go ahead and import the decks. Put these in one window. So we got Finn as our clue character and Nathaniel as our fighter. Import those. Grade sheets. Mm, seems to have imported this one in the. R it's going to drop it once it uh, finishes loading, isn't it? All right, so we're good. This is there. It probably shouldn't be. So let's go ahead and set up the campaign log. This will be Finn. And this could be Nathaniel. No starting traumas or anything. No in the thick of it in this card pool. No problem. So I'm not going to read all the story text for. Scarlet Keys because there's a lot of it and I think that's not really the goal of this. Probably you're already familiar with this if you if you've played this campaign, so I will not read it. But we're gonna be playing on standard. Go ahead and just hit the place here and go on standard. Ooh, they don't show like the animation anymore, it just puts a message. Very nice. The pop up. So we go to the first intro, we meet we get a letter from Flint. Essentially, we've been investigating and certain aspects of the world, I guess, are being erased. People vanishing, objects vanishing, strange things happening, typical Arkham Horror stuff. We get a letter from, from Inspector Flint Lee talking about how he knows what we're investigating and we should go meet him at a, I think he wants us to meet him at a play. So we go ahead and do that. And then he says, it, we should go with him to London to look and do some investigating up there because the mysterious regal of man has been spotted in London and we think that he's related to the disappearances. So we have an immediate choice here. We can either take uh, take Flint up on his offer and go with him or we can refuse and go to London on our own terms. I'm going to go ahead and just go with Flint because it actually is saves a little more time and of course we are extremely tight on the time. So... If we go with Flint, we would remove one of the Elder Things and add a tablet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we should have two tablets in here and no Elder Things anymore. And we mark one time in our campaign log. Then we proceed to setup. So for this scenario, we start at the rainy London streets with no other locations in play. We have an encounter deck like always. I think everything else is pretty much taken care of for us by TTS, so we shouldn't have to do very much at all. So we're basically ready to just get started. Does have the traits I said? It does. Nice. That's pretty cool that that imports from ArkhamDB like that. Really nice integration. All right. So on standard, we don't need this anymore. Let me get rid of it before I accidentally click it and mess up my token bag. Let's get started by reading our acts and agendas. Agenda 1A, when it rains. Arriving in London, you patiently await your contact, but none arrives. Inspector Flint, or one of his proxies, was supposed to meet you at a quiet tea house tucked away in a narrow storefront just outside Trafalgar Square. Wondering what could have gone wrong and suspecting the worst, you set off to investigate. All right, when this agenda advances, you move all doom on it to the next agenda. Act 1A, clues and capers. You draw your umbrella closer, using it to obscure your identity. Each person you pass on the street could be your contact or be out to get you. So as a group, we want to spend four clues before the agenda advances. Uh, it's a bit of a race. You know, if you can spend these four clues before this, it's, it's better. But I also don't care that much. And the penalty for losing the race is extremely minor, almost to the point where it's so unimportant. I'd rather just not race and just do setup. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I need to set my hands correctly so that I can see Nathaniel's hand. Boxing gloves. <laughs> That'd be nice to get lucky. Um, I don't think I need any of these right away. I might just toss them all and search for boxing gloves. 
Greet's okay though. I can see keeping greet. Boxing gloves is pretty critical, right? So I'll draw greet again later. Let's keep greed. We'll just look for boxing gloves with the other cards. Speak of the devil. Even Randall Cho, huh? Well, that was a pretty good hand, I'd say. Got my boxing gloves right away and an ally once I can afford it. Uh, for Finn, I didn't actually do his mulligan, so let's go ahead and do that. I guess I don't really need any of these right now. I mostly want clue cards. Taking the Hornet's Nest is likely to miss. I don't think there's any enemies in the encounter deck at the start. Let's just try again. Lock picks, that's nice. Dr. Milan, that's even nicer. Damning Testimony. Lucky Cigarette Case. Pretty good hand, I'd say. We can get out Milan and start investigating right away. So we definitely could beat this if we wanted to. Um, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I'm going to mostly focus on just getting my setup into place, getting out my Milan and cigarette case and lockpicks, and just taking cards and resources. Yeah, it's definitely best, I think, just to get everything in play. So there's definitely Crypt Chill in the counter deck, which means if I don't, if I put out these two, I risk losing them. Uh, I'd rather protect with cigarette case if I can. So let's just do cigarette case. Then money and then Milan for now. That seems decent to me. And then for Nathaniel, we would like to just get out boxing gloves and greet, I think. So we'll take money, money, then we'll do money so that we don't get. Hmm, I guess Crypt Chill is always going to be a bit painful, but if we do it this way, at least we shouldn't be able to get Crypt Chilled right now. We would just take damage because we have no assets. So we'll do that. So then we go to upkeep, upkeep. Oh, I forgot that was I forgot that was in my deck. Well, we'll survive. It's pretty bad, but we'll survive. I needed something to make it a little more interesting, right? It would have been too easy otherwise. So we shuffle and we draw. There are no enemies in the shadows. It gains surge. Spend a clue or choose to discard half your hand. That's funny. We're just not gonna have any cards in our hand this game. Question is if I would rather have Perception or Damning Testimony. I think I'd rather have Damning Testimony. I don't think it's that good, but it's not that bad either. All right, plus two Shroud here. It's fine. I wasn't planning to investigate anyway. So Finn's turn is super boring. I'm just going to money, money, lock picks. And then this is basically set. For Nathaniel, let's just draw a card. If we draw a card, we draw Tommy Malloy. It's pretty terrible, right? We'll at least play our boxing gloves before we do that. Then we'll draw Tommy Malloy. <laughs> nope. Draw again. All right. So we're okay. So we go upkeep and upkeep. Stone out Tommy Malloy. So that's nice. Put a doom and this advances. Eventually, you notice the tail. The figure stalks you through the rainy streets, pretending to have some other pressing task at hand. For once, you believe your paranoia may have paid off. There's only one way to know for sure. So you test your theory, walking faster, moving aimlessly through the streets, and doubling back to see what they do. Every time, they are there, watching you. It's a tale, all right. You flip the script and begin to give chase instead. If they work for the man with the red gloves, you're going to find out. We each take a horror. Doom transfers over as well, so let me leave the two Doom there. Lead Investigator, uh, sorry, we got to put inside, uh, put the set aside Kensington Gardens, Westminster Abbey, and Big Ben into play. So let's do that. Big Ben, Westminster Abbey, and Kensington Gardens. It basically looks something like that. These other cards can go back aside out of play. And then we draw this, th we draw the set aside Red Glove Man and resolve his concealed effect. So we would grab the Reglove Man and one per investigator decoys. So two decoys and the Reglove Man. Shuffle them up and spread them out. Go ahead and put out map path markers as well. I know that they have uh, some system to do it automatically nowadays, but I like the path markers still. So we'll do like that. And then we'll go ahead and draw our encounter cards. So this act also advances, I believe. 
So basically, we have another two doom in order to hunt down the regla man. So we need to engage him before the agenda advances. And we really need to do this because if I don't get it, I'm going to restart the campaign because that would cost us a time, and I'm definitely not willing to lose the time. What do we got? If there are no enemies in the shadows, gain surge. Otherwise, test your willpower, uh, your intellect, or agility. If you fail, place a decoy at the location with the most concealed mini cards face down and shuffle them. Um, it's not the end of the world, I'd say. So I'm going to go ahead and just go four versus five versus four on this. Okay, so I have to add an extra decoy to here. Should be all right. Heavy rain. For each point you fail by, take a horror. That's going to be a decent amount of horror. We can encourage this. We're up by two. Nice. No horror at all. Very good. So I think this shouldn't be that bad. Let's have Finn go first. He can rush up to Westminster Abbey. Parlay, choose a location, and test will power one to ask around the Abbey. For each point you succeed by it, look at the revealed side of a concealed mini card at a chosen location. Choose location. Okay, yeah. Uh, not very good. Not very necessary. So let's just do some exposes. So we have a free evasion action that we'll try to do four verse one to expose one of these cards. Okay. That's a decoy. Then we can try to investigate five versus one to expose another card. Not a fail. We'll do it again. Pass. We get a money for Dr. Milan and another decoy. Should be all right here. Um, Nathaniel can go over here and punch this one. So we'll do that. After you expose a decoy here, you get to heal a horror. After you expose an enemy, you take a horror. Well, if there's a decoy, I guess I don't mind, right? It has upsides. So we'll try to fight it. We are five versus two, or six versus two. The regular man. So we take a horror for that, but he's exposed. So this decoy goes away. He engages us, and when he engages us, the act advances. After much toil and pursuit, you finally catch up to the figure you've been chasing. A feeling of vindication washes over you as you spot the red gloves the man wears. It was no phantom you chased. This is the one you've sought all along. You corner him in a narrow alleyway, sheets of rain and fog masking your approach. Several more figures flank the man. A meeting, perhaps? To your surprise, he casts an expressionless gaze in your direction. Then, fast as a flash of lightning and gone just as swiftly, a formless shape ducks out of you. A chunk of a nearby building goes along with it. When you turn to question your quarry about what happened, they have all fled east. You inch forward and examine the partially excised wall covered in an ectoplasmic substance like the negative of an undeveloped photo. Set the irregular man aside out of play. Let's move these other concealed cards as well. And then put the set-aside Tower Bridge and Tower of London into play. Shuffle the set-aside Crimson Conspiracy and Outsiders into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard to advance immediately to the next agenda. So we can shuffle these and those as well as all this into here. Then we need to put the Tower Bridge and the Tower of London into play. Not the Trader's Gate, just these two. And these other ones are still aside out of play, so we'll put them back in here. And this looks something like that. And we are ready to continue. He is set aside out of play, I believe. Where did I put it? Here it is. Yep, he's back aside out of play. Right, so we need to continue our investigations here. Nathaniel has one action remaining. I feel like I want to be close to Finn in case he draws an enemy. Well, he is pretty good at evading, so maybe we'll just draw a card and see what happens. Nice. So then we would go to upkeep on both investigators. Finally, we got the other greed backs. So that's nice. Draw an encounter. Foggy here. Thankfully, it's quite low shroud to begin with, so we should be able to lock picks out of that. All right, so we get to search for a concealed enemy. That's good. Give us something to do with Nathaniel. So the only options are the coterie agents. So let's take a coterie agent A. So he's in the shadows. So we would take two decoys for his concealed keyword, and then the coterie agent A mini card. Shuffle them up. Spread them here, there, and. I have a choice, right? I can go either here or there. I'm going to put it here because I think that's relatively easy and we can use Finn's auto evade, uh, free evasion action on that. And then this guy gets one doom. And as soon as we expose him, he gets discarded. So shouldn't have to worry too much. 
about actually fighting him. Let's have Finn go first. Let's just lock picks here. So, hmm, pretty. I guess it's a uh, we're nine versus three, so we should be good on everything but auto fail. Excellent. So we'll take a clue with that, and because we successfully investigated, we get to discard the fog. And Milan also gives us some money. So that's one action. Let's take a free evasion against this. Four versus one. The decoy. Then let's investigate with our just uh, five versus one. That's another clue. And last action, we'll go ahead and move to Big Ben. Big Ben lets you test your agility to eek at cards. It's potentially good, but do we want to do it? I could give this a try right now and just peek at this card just in case. It might save Nathaniel one action, right? I don't think I really care that much. I think I'll do it though. I mean, fail condition is you take a horror, so I'm up by two. Nice. So we know that's not where we go. It's basically useless. That's good. Well, that means we're going to expose another enemy here and take another horror, but that's all right. Let's play Greet first. Five money. Let's take a basic fight. So we are seven. I'm going to take this here. I know it only counts when you're fighting, so I guess I won't. We'll just be seven versus uh, seven versus two. What even is that token effect? Who knows? Minus one. If there's a concealed mini card, reveal another one. No problem. All right, we're still good. So we can expose this. this. Is the code reagent A? So we may discard it right away, but I'm actually going to choose not to discard it. Reactions are always optional. So instead, he would spawn at our location and then move to our threat area. And then we can just punch again. And this way, we can trigger greet for a clue and trigger boxing gloves for a search. Let's take another punch. So we are seven versus one. Of course, we auto fail. Doesn't really matter, though. He only does one damage. But I thought that might happen. <laughs> uh, we need to take a horror as well when we expose him. We'll put that on greet. All right, so then we go to our upkeep. Good, not Tommy Malloy. This might be a good play. This might be good later in the scenario. We could drop this on the final location and reduce the shroud down a lot. That seems pretty promising to me. The Doom. What you got, Finn? Another Coterie Agent. So we'll put this one here. We might be able to pull off the same trick again. Need the C card this time. Two decoys and the coterie agent. Spread them like so. This guy gets a doom. And Nathaniel. Under clue or take two damage. Damage it is. Here we have no clues to spend. Um this dec one of these this decoy should be gone, right? Because this guy was exposed, so this is a decoy. We know it's a decoy. It gets set aside automatically, so we just have these three seal cards to look at. All right, um, let's have Nathaniel go first because he can punch this, move here, and maybe punch that. Kind of tough with the fog, though. They can attack. Okay, so this guy is defeated. I get a clue with Greet. Take a damage on Greet, and I can trigger this to search the top six cards in my deck for a spirit event. Which of these would be useful, I suppose? One, two punches. Good against Tommy Malloy, I think. Let's take one two punch. That'll be good if we also draw a more scary enemy as well. That's one action. Let's walk over here. Let's take a punch on this. So this is five. Five ver so we're only up by two, but that's still worth trying, I think. Or by one. Still pass. What are we agent C? So this is an interesting question. Do we just do we want to just discard it or do we let it spawn on us? And then try to kill it next turn with the greet thing again. I am getting a little bit damaged, but I think that if Nathaniel can that if Nathaniel can grab clues, that's pretty great. I might be able to go over here and grab this clue. It's a lot of hits though. I think I want to watch my health. I'm not that worried about grabbing all the clues in time, so we'll just let it discard it this time. And here are these decoys. That's Nathaniel's turn. Pretty solid turn. 
Finn's gonna have to try to do some... In oh, we could have done damning testimony there, huh? If we left it in play. I think that's worth it in that case. We're gonna let this stay. I'm gonna take that back. So we'll have this guy here with a doom, and then Finn can just play damning testimony. Then he can investigate Coterie Agent's location. Well, we investigate our location, and if we succeed, we also get a clue from Coterie Agent's location. So we are 5 versus 4. This gets us to up by 3. Perfect. So I get to spend an evidence. I get one clue from my location and one clue from the Coterie Agent's location. This is once per turn. I might be able to do it again next turn. I get a card for his wall for perception. Then I have an option. How much did I pass by? Pass by zero, I think. We can investigate with this. So we're up by five. That's fine. Nice. We get another clue, and we even get a card for our cigarette case. Awesome. This is going pretty well. So then this guy gets a hit on Nathaniel, and we go to upkeep. Excellent. We get a mythos. Five out of nine. Six with this extra one doom here. Another one. Well, we're getting a lot of these code reagents. That's okay. If we get them all out of the way early, it's fine with me. We don't seem to have very much trouble dealing with them at all, so sure, why not, right? This guy's in the shadows with a doom on him. Daniel? Locked door. So this is locked and foggy. We're definitely not going to be grabbing any clues from there. So, I'm going to have Finn go ahead. He can take a horror if he fails. It's not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and just try to peek. We're up by two. Oh, what is this? Okay, so we're up by one. Okay, so we fail. That's fine. We take one horror for that. That's once per turn? Yes. I can do that at any free window. It doesn't have to be during my turn. So no one's gone yet. How many clues do we have? We have six total clues. So we can already start heading towards the next spots if we want. We would need to grab some clues from the Tower Bridge. This costs four to enter, and then we're going to need another three at the Tower of London itself. So we're going to... We don't want to hang around the Tower of London too much, I believe. So I could probably just... I'm never going to break down this door. I don't really think that's worth it, so... There's like two here. Two here. I think it works. I don't exactly remember, though. Finn could move twice, and then we could do the damning testimony to grab another one from the marine streets. I mean, that seems pretty promising to me. We can move twice to here and scoop up these last two, but I think I'd rather go here and try. Let's see what the shroud is. It's only two. Pretty easy. So we are five versus two. I guess this is worth a lot, right? So maybe we'll drop the sneak attack. It's worth two clues. It was worth it. Very nice. So we get a clue from our location, and we get a clue from this location. A lot of clues. Yeah, we're very nearly there. All right, Nathaniel's turn. I really would like to snag the clue from there, because it's worth a victory. So I'm going to just go here and take the attack of opportunity, then we'll take a punch on this guy, and we'll use Greet to grab this clue, and we will trigger this. What do we got? Get over here. I for, you know I kind of forgot these concealed guys were here, so I probably probably left. Finn should have done tried to do an evasion. He would have failed, so no big deal there. Hmm. Nathaniel should probably go try to clear this up, so that's what he can do while Finn works on the clues. Anyway, I got to pick a card to grab. Right. It seems like money has not been a big issue, so let's just do get over here. I moved. I attacked. I have one action left. Let's move back. All right, so it's the end of my turn. So then we would go upkeep. Uh, there are no enemies in play. Shuffles back in my deck. Upkeep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. The doom. On a counter. All right, so Nathaniel's going to have to deal with that right away. So when it enters play, we each choose a non weakness card we control in our hand or play yet instead of a side out of play. I'll put aside a Derringer, and Nathaniel can put aside 
not boxing gloves, that's for sure. It might be obvious to pick boxing gloves, but then if you draw that encounter card, which punishes you for each duplicate you have, you end up feeling pretty silly. Let's do boxing gloves. Substance assimilation is what it's called. So this is engaged here. Finn can go first, evade it, and Nathaniel can come over and do some punches, and that seems like it'll work just fine. Uh, each enemy in the shadows attacks you, or each investigator loses an action. Nathaniel's health is starting to look quite suspect, right? Um, but I really don't want to give up the actions, that's for sure. Let's just do that. We're going to have to watch this, though. Uh, I guess if we have to, we can kill off... Well, we've used both of our allies. We don't have that much more health soak, because we lost Randall to the Amnesia earlier. It'll be fine. We'll figure it out. So for Finn, I definitely want to try to evade if I can. I'm up by two. That's not horrible, but it's not great either. Good drop, Grizzled. Let's just do that. We're up by three. Nice. So we evade him. We get a card for Cigarette Case. I probably shouldn't have drawn the card, right? Because if I drew Caught Red-Handed, I would have felt really silly. It would have been terrible. That's one. Um, do I want to use my Sneak Attack here? I say so. I think it's good. I don't need to. I think we'll just save it. I think let's just grab this clue. We could actually move into here and then investigate backwards to here using damning testimony. It seems pretty reasonable to me. Let's try that. Let's duck into here. Hmm, I wonder what shroud this is. Not bad, I guess. So we can go into there, and so we have to spend four clues to enter. Four. Then we can trigger damning testimony. So we are just up by go up by three. Uh, I should have thrown the sneak attack. Oh well. I don't lose the evidence though, which is nice. So that's it for that turn. And at the end of my turn, I lose two resources reach enemy in the shadows attacks me. Take the one damage. No problem at all. I didn't get a successful investigate, so no Dr. Milan money this turn. All right, well, let's see what you can do. Let's go ahead and... See, now I'd like to leave this over here, or at least leave it alive. He's evaded, so I could do get over here and then drag him somewhere else. Just kill him next turn? I should probably just kill him while I have the chance, right? It's worth it. How many clues do I need? Not very many. We basically have enough clues. So, sure, let's just one two punch him. All right, so we fight at eight versus four. Wow, that's really, really lame. Should still be fine, but it's super annoying. So again, this for we're up by four here because we are basically we're a seven. Okay, takes three damage for that. Well, at least my one two punch, but that's okay. We're so far ahead that it's not going to matter at all. So we go upkeep, upkeep. I ready and engages. So we will get a chance, I guess, with Finn to do the investigating again. The doom. I'm not going to get to this guy in time, and that's all right. Knives in the dark. After you expose a decoy, take two damage. And you have to test agility to clear it, so that's certainly better on Finn than the other way around. Hmm. Another damage or lose actions. I feel like we're doing pretty good on We're doing pretty good on time, so we'll lose the actions, even though I think it's definitely not worth normally not worth it. Alright, Finn. You can go first. Let's try the damning testimony again. I'd really like this to pass. Great, I get a clue from my location and a clue from this location. I was five, six, seven, seven verse three. I passed by two. I can get a card. Take that. Nice. Trigger Milan for money. Uh, Nathaniel needs to be over here to actually spend the clues, but I can still try to grab this one. I'll take it. It's good to have clues, even though it doesn't do anything by itself. Let's just draw a card with our last action. 
That'd be a good thing to get out. Yep. All right, and then end of my turn. Lose two money or take a damage. Take a damage, and then test this. We're not really up by that much. We can go up by two. No good. All right. Then Nathaniel's turn. He needs to do some damage to this. Unfortunately, we're going to waste a little bit of one of our things, but that's fine. Up by three. This is dead. We may either add it to the victory display or we can take back three of our hollows. Of course, I would much rather have the victory point. And the victory display goes. Then we can move over here and we can spend down our clues. So you can spend all of yours and Nathaniel will keep his too. Quietly and cautiously, you follow the figure from a distance. With measured haste, he darts to and fro inside an ominous tower, searching for something. Finally, while you watch from the shadows, the man with the red gloves finds what he is looking for, a loose brick along one of the candlelit hall's many columns. He casually rotates the stone brick into place with a kind of nonchalance as if he were dealing with a, place, a piece of misplaced laundry. To your surprise, a section of the nearby wall rotates in turn, revealing a secret passageway. He ascends into darkness, and you follow in secret. Put the set aside tower prison into play. Very good. Um, move each concealed card in play there, and then we also draw the Red Glove Man. Draw the set-aside Red Glove Man, and can resolve his concealed keyword. So that's two more decoys plus the Red Glove Man. So we got a total of six concealed cards up there. Shuffle them all up so we don't know which is which. And we're good to go. I just realized I forgot to trigger Boxing Gloves, so I'm going to do that. Um, none of these really thrill me. We'll do counter punch. All right. So that's the end of our turns. So we go to upkeep. Kicking the hornet's nest could do. The doom, and we would advance. All right. Uh, as the night grows deeper and the rain becomes a torrent, you flinch at every moving shadow, every sound, every shape. You wonder if perhaps this investigation is getting the best of you, or maybe there are more of them than you thought watching you. Lying in wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. Alright, so we may either take a damage and a horror each. I think we can still do this. I'm just, letting, I'm just gonna let it kill Greet, because I think we don't need her anymore. She's still gonna be good for a little while. We'll just take the damage and horror on us. We should be okay. And Finn can take the damage horror, of course. He's doing just fine. Right. We got seven more Doom. This Doom is also cleared, of course. This guy's in the shadows. I didn't draw the regular man, but he is also in the shadows. Sealed. These guys are in the shadows. Uh, we got seven more Doom. Deep fog blots out the moonlight, bathing the city in utter, utter darkness. From the rooftops, ravens watch your progress with inhumane intelligence. Every moving shadow sets your mind racing. If you don't find the man with the red gloves and stop his plans, who knows what he will do next? And then for the act, which uh, I didn't read before, Somewhere in these forgotten crypts, the man with the red gloves is searching for something, but for what purpose? So he gains a parlay ability, which is certainly too hard for us to use. Uh, stop the red glove man from stealing the eye of ravens if he is defeated, or if there are two uh, resources on him in advance. So we're just going to go and find him and defeat him, pretty much. But we got to draw on counter cards first. Crypt chill. All right. Well, we're going to lose. This is out of evidence, isn't it? I think we used the last evidence. I just forgot to get rid of it. So we'll just lose that. And it's gone. Shut up, spend a clear, take two damage. That's why I kept the clues on Nathaniel, so no problem. So I I have breached the door here, which should do like pretty crazy things. As long as we don't auto fail. So I'm gonna have Nathaniel go ahead. Uh, he should have lost two money, I guess, when he ended his turn here. So Nathaniel will go ahead to the tower prison. Well, an investigator at Tower Prisons performing a spell test. You can perf you can uh, spend one clue. That investigates investigator gets plus two skill value for this test. And then whenever a concealed card enter play anywhere, you put it on the prison. And we got four clues here. We can get for a victory, which we will definitely do because we have seven doom to finish this, which is a lot. So let's go ahead and breach the door. If we can reduce this to zero. It'd be really good. So we are basically a six. A six versus one. I'm willing to put a lot into this. Seven, eight, eight versus one. Okay, so we get to put it here and we put seven leads on it, which basically reduces the shroud by one for each lead, reducing this down to a zero. I'm just gonna put four. 
this has a hey, hey now that's difficulty a shroud of is literally zero so we go in we reach the door let's investigate we are two versus zero we get a clue all right finn's turn let's walk in let's investigate five versus zero it's a clue let's investigate five versus zero again also milan money and we fail that one that's okay let's test for knives in the dark i don't think we have anything here we're just up by we're just up by one nope all right so let me go to upkeep upkeep go to mythos John encounter false lead uh we test intellect four and for each point we fail by we drop one of our clues i don't really care we can just take the clues back no problem right we pass anyway, so no problem. All right, locked door here. Well, again, we're gonna have to break that down with Nathan Nathaniel. Nathaniel will try to break the locked door. Let's spend one clue so we get plus two and we beat the skull this way. So we're up by four. All right, that is gone. And we can investigate for a clue. And we can investigate for another clue. That was a minus three, but the shroud is zero, so my two gets reduced down to a negative one, which gets rounded back to zero, and so I win. Because uh, investigators win ties. Then, hmm, I kind of should have played this last turn, probably. We still have time to load it up, so let's spend two money to put two resources on the embezzled treasure. I think I just want to draw cards so I can beat Knives in the Dark this turn, hopefully. Is it a terror? No, it's a scheme. I wonder if scheme would have been a better second keyword here than hex, potentially. All right, let's try to clear it. I don't think Nathaniel's going to really need counter punch. So we'll commit that. And we'll commit this. So we are up by three. Okay, that's finally gone. That's good. All right, so that's the end of the turn. We go to our upkeep. Upkeep. Ah, Tommy Malloy. Well, we're going to have to deal with him, but that's okay. Go to Doom, counter. If you fill a skill test at a location with a concealed mini card, take a horror. Fine. All right, so we test our agility four, I suppose. We're going to fail that. OK, we fail, and we place an extra decoy here, which shouldn't be a big problem, considering the shroud's been reduced to zero. So Tommy's turn's pretty boring. He's just going to punch four time, three times, right? So we are seven versus two, one, seven versus two, two, seven versus two. Uh, oh, well, we're still good. So Tommy Malloy's dead. We get to search our deck for a spirit. I'm getting a little concerned by the fact there's just not that many spirit events. Maybe I need to add more somewhere. I could have cleaned them out. It wouldn't have helped there. Just extra money, though. All right, um, let's do our free evasion, everything but auto fail to expose. Yep, decoy, cool, no problem. Let's push some money over here. See, so I actually don't want to expose the red glove man because if I do, I'll have to deal with him right away. I'd rather stall out a few more turns to load up my embezzled treasure. So maybe I'll just clear this. I feel like I can take it really slow. I'm going to be just fine. Let's go to upkeep. Upkeep. I probably could have triggered this, but let's say I just didn't do it. Boom. All right, so I hollow the top card of my deck. Not a big deal. Hollow the top card of my deck again. Still not a big deal. Daniel's going to be busy. I guess Finn can just evade his, though. Potentially. He's not that good at evading right now. We have, don't have very much agility. We might need to find a way to get extra agility into this deck. It does have manual dexterities, but we just didn't draw them yet. Yeah, normally you would take, like, you know, Lola Santiago, that kind of thing, but not in this card pool. This maybe should have been Monster for the second trait? Potentially. But it is what it is now. Let's go for Clean the Mounts. So we are, I don't know, uh, seven versus three for two damage. So he's dead. We triggered Nathaniel's ability for extra damage. Searching. 
One two punch seems like it's going to be helpful. I think we can just do punches against this. Try to kill it that way. Five, six, seven, seven versus three. So just not auto fail. One, two. That kills that too. Save Finn some actions that way. So what is the plan when the Red Glove Man actually appears? I mean, he's just tough, right? We might be able to parley with Finn if we get enough wild icons. Oh, I forgot. We had these clues to spend. That's what the plan was. We just boost a lot with the clues, and then we do it with that. Should be fine, then. Um, Let's embezzle some treasure. We have so much time. Just slowballing on purpose. Let's just do the free one. Okay. Let's do a normal investigate. Cool. I don't want to play with fire too much. If I draw a reglove man, what do I have to do? I just have to wait. Return. Let's just go one more time. Okay, let's go one more time. Yep. All right, that's good. We cleared up almost everything, so it's super easy now to get to what we want. We just go upkeep, upkeep. Nice, nice. Oh, this is really nice. We can just one-shot the reglove man. This works on elites, right? Definitely. Uh, test willpower 3. For each point you fail by, you must either take a whore or place one of your clues on your location. We'll try to block a little bit of this. So we're up by 1. Uh, maximum committed. We're up by 1. Minus 1. Great. Trip chill. Ooh, that's going to hurt. I guess we can lose greed. It's not the end of the world, but it's not good. So we can go five, six, seven, seven, four. All right. Goodbye, greed. Is greed better than, greed better than boxing gloves, right? Boxing gloves is just plus one. Greed's always plus one. Plus she has a little more damage horror she can take. But yeah, we'll just ditch that. My god, we have so much time, it's ridiculous. Even if I missed a Doom, we're still going to finish ahead of time. I don't think I did, though. I I just don't feel the need to do anything. I'll just draw some cards, I guess. Because if I do some Investigates, I might reveal the regular man, then I have to deal with him. Draw a card to begin with. Draw another card. Okay. We'll do one test. Okay, cool. We get rid of this one. That's nice, I suppose. I'm going to wait one more turn, so I'm just going to draw a card again. Then Nathaniel's turn. Pretty much the same thing. Yep. So we go upkeep, upkeep. Let's keep one money. How this works. Go Mythos. Got two doom left. Money. Alright, so we test our uh, intellect. And if we fail, we put a card. Who cares? Doesn't even fail. Place a doom on enemy in the shadows. So we gotta finish this turn. That's our fate. Uh, so Finn can go and he can investigate. Okay, we get a money from Milan. Then we'll spend both money. So embezzled treasure is completed. Uh, if we evade, we can do a sneak attack. So that seems reasonable, just in case. Your four, five, six, seven. Eight. That's fine. Nice. So we get an evasion here. We can sneak attack two onto him. I don't have enough money. <laughs> I didn't think this through. That's okay. Um, that's fine. He's still evaded, I guess. It doesn't hurt. Uh, I can trigger a lucky sig. Might just ready him again. But if I do, it's still not a big deal. Let's draw. Let's just draw one in case we draw icons. I guess I don't want to draw my weakness, right? So we'll just end there. Let's take a money. Nathaniel's got to do all four, but... 
as long as we don't auto fail, it should be very easy. Let's start with one two punch. Yep. So we are five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is gone. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. So we will put we put one more than we need actually. So we can just go like this. Nine verse five. Excellent. So he takes two damage. You succeed, you may fight the enemy again. Definitely not there. Takes two damage, and then we fight again. We'll spend a clue on this one. So we are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that deals two more damage. He's defeated. He defeated the regular man. The figure reels backwards, grasping at his wound. Something small clatters to the ground. The man says nothing, only glares at you from the darkness. His gloves seem to ripple around his hands, like the disturbed surface of a deep crimson pool, and after a moment, he straightens himself. Then, blending into the shadows, he tips his hat and is gone. R1. Alright. So just to summarize, we search for the man, but he is truly gone as if he vanished. We instead examine the object that he left behind. For us, the Eye of Ravens, which is a key. It's a very good key. Uh, during a skill test of your location, the performing investigator sets their base skill value for this test to 6. Flip this key to its unstable side. This is going straight to Finn and never leaving because it totally handles his one willpower, at least once per game, which is about as much as you usually need with it. Uh, we find a nice little bit of poetry on the body, on the lid of the coffin. With red we are bound, through red we are one. Thus in red do we bury our kin and our ken. May you rest until you are needed once more. All right. And then after a few moments, we are basically uh, accosted at gunpoint by a woman dressed in a black suit, along with some of her goons, I suppose. And she says, where did the man with the red gloves man, uh, where did the man with the red gloves go, she asks, and who are you? All right. So each investigator earns victory X, and one investigator becomes the bearer of the, of the Eye of Ravens. In your campaign log, record that you have not seen the last of the red gloves man. I should check if there was any other stuff I was supposed to record. I don't think so. So it shouldn't be a problem anyway. Mark one time in your campaign log. Proceed to interlude the foundation. So in the interlude, we talk with and meet Commissioner Taylor, who is a member of a member of the foundation, which is basically a, a group of people who are investigating the disappearance or not the disappearances, but investigating the Red Glove Man and the Red Coterie. Uh, we have the option to either tell her about the disappearances or not. I believe it makes no difference to me, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say I'm going to not tell her about the disappearances. So we skip to the foundation three. All right, so basically you record that you hid the truth from Taylor and swap one of these tokens for the other one. So let's swap one of these for one of those. I don't actually know. I haven't planned out the token routing at all for this, so I'm not super sure what I'm doing with that, but this part should be fine. Uh, so we record that we hid the truth, which shouldn't really matter, I believe. All right, so basically we are assigned to work with Flint as part of a cell investigating the Red Coterie, and we get a big list of places we can investigate. And of course, the big gimmick of this campaign is that you get to travel the world looking for well looking for stuff to do basically there's a bunch of scenarios spread out on this map and also a bunch of interludes some much linked to each other and honestly it's pretty cool but that'll be all for now in any case we've got five experience to spend which is pretty awesome we didn't have too much trouble with the scenario uh, actually we crushed it we have five on embezzled treasure even which i would like to record here for finn so we'll start with a crap ton of money next scenario to help us get our setup in place quickly, though we have to spend it fast before we draw our weakness paranoia and lose it all, because that would be really silly of me. Even with the uh, amnesia on Nathaniel, it just was not very close, so 
that's good. But yeah, that'll be it for this playthrough. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and do the deck upgrades while we're here. May as well do those right now. I haven't really planned it out too much. I usually just do it through edit. I usually don't upgrade tool myself. I know I want to play with Damning Testimony, and it worked out really well, this scenario. So I'm thinking we just slap some blackmail on there, and that could be our first two points. This gives us plus two further intellect when investigating using Damning Testimony, which is just great. We can use it to grab extra clues and stuff. Um, what else do we need? Extra evidence is not bad, but maybe that's not a priority upgrade. We definitely want Underworld Market, but I don't think I need to get it right away. I wonder. We could just jump Underworld Market immediately and just get the Damning Testimony later. That could be good in its own way. I think Lockpicks. Yeah, definitely Lockpicks. Those are way more important than anything else, right? Upgrade Lockpicks is such a big jump. I, I forgot to put it here in my, uh, my planned upgrades. Let's see what else we've got to look at. Lucky Sig Case is going to make it eventually. That's guaranteed. I don't think there's any more one experience stuff I want. Cat Burglar could be all right. He might be better than... Uh... Oh, he's not like he's not crazy or anything. But he might be better in any case than our Trigger Man idea, though. I think we want to try Trigger Man just for fun. Chuck Fergus don't really have the pieces for him. Dirty Fighting, of course, is a great card, but I'm not going to use it in this Finn deck, most likely. Upgraded Backstab is a Winifred card, huh? That's interesting, though I don't really need it. I think this is going to go eventually probably as well, but I think for now that'll do it for that deck. We'll just stay on 1xp. Should have one left. Should have five right now. Well, I think it's pretty obvious, right? We just get Boxing Gloves ASAP. Let's go ahead and just grab one of these boxing gloves. I feel like I can't afford much else. I want to just look at what we can upgrade into later. Hunter's Armor, I think, is going to make it someday. Not right now, but it, it definitely is going to make it in for the deck eventually. Physical training is probably not actually going to make the cut, but I'll leave it there in case later I decide I want it. Got a nice collection of solid fighting events that we'll grab eventually the get over here's the get over here is not that crazy in this campaign right because yeah because there's no like acolyte or anything it's all uh concealed stuff counter punch is still solid though counter punch mono and mono definitely good stuff i could go for one mono and mono right now that's an option I think I'll just sit on this. I'll just sit on these extra points and plan to get my boxing gloves right away next time. Yep, so these are the decks after the first upgrade. That went pretty smoothly, I'd say. It's pretty easy, lots of time to spare. Riddles and Rain, it can get tricky at times, but this time not so much. Maybe these characters are just super, super, super powerful at it at least. Seem pretty good at level zero. So that's it for this time, and next time we will begin traveling the world and do the next of our nine scenarios remaining. Until then.